In this video, we will see another type of rendering, the Interactive Production Rendering or IPR. Open one of your 3ds Max files, it doesn't make a difference which one. When we hit the Render button, the rendering process begins. While it is rendering, we can intervene in the scene. If we try, for instance, to select something in the viewports, we can't really do that. The rendering process must first be completed or paused, so let's hit the Cancel button in the rendering window. Now that we have cancelled the rendering, we can go and select items from the viewports. Now, let's try the IPR method. To start the interactive rendering, go to the Render Setup window, go to the V-Ray tab and open the IPR Options rollout. Click the Start IPR button. Now, while I am rendering, I can go to the camera viewport and select objects. I can click, for instance, on the glass on the coffee table and move it. As you can see, the rendering process automatically refreshes. What does refresh mean in this case? It stopped the previous render and started from scratch. And it does that automatically. So, why use the interactive rendering instead of the typical one? Because the interactive production rendering allows you to make changes to the scene while the rendering process continues, and the changes will be rendered automatically. The rendering time remains the same, no matter which option you will choose. You just save time because while you are in the testing phase, you can preview faster your changes instead of constantly cancelling and restarting your rendering manually. Use the Abort Rendering button to stop V-Ray IPR. And after stopping, you can click Start Interactive Rendering to restart IPR. While the scene is rendering, the Start Interactive Rendering button changes to the Refresh Interactive Rendering. Click this button to restart the rendering at any time. The Progress bar at the bottom of the V-Ray Frame Buffer tracks the rendering progress. When you use IPR, if you click in another viewport, let's say the top view, while you are rendering, it will automatically start rendering the top view. So, in order to be able to make changes in all viewports and only render the camera viewport, go to the Render Setup dialog box, go to the View to Render setting, select your camera, and click the lock icon next to it. Now, no matter which viewport is active, only the camera viewport will be rendered. Another useful tip here is that apart from rendering the full viewport, you can choose to render only selected objects. More specifically, while you are using the interactive rendering, select an object from your scene. I will select the armchair. Go to the V-Ray Frame Buffer, hold down the IPR Debug Setting button, and from the drop-down menu, choose Isolate Selected. The VFB window refreshes automatically and renders only our selection and everything else is black. Well, plus some V-Ray lights here. This is extremely helpful because it allows you to do quick tests on specific objects and see, let's see how light and shadows affect this object by eliminating all other distractions. This works also with materials. Open the Material Editor, choose the Pick Material from Object command and click on the wardrobe, let's say, to pick the wood finish. 
the finish appears in the material editor and let's see what we can do now. If we double click on the diffuse bitmap node, this texture start re starts rendering and we can see how it unfolds on the surfaces. If we now double click on the bump node, it refreshes and renders that texture. While, if we double click on the V-Ray material, it will render the full finish. So, this is really useful when you have complex shaders with many maps, you can easily visualize each and one of them and then see how they render separately and all together. To exit the isolation mode, press Ctrl D or click on the IPR debug setting button and select again the isolate selected. Another useful command in the IPR debug setting is the lighting. It renders the scene like it's a clay render, which means a medium grey color with no textures, and basically demonstrates the lighting in the scene. I have never really used it, but you can also select to render wireframe. You can also use the region render. Click this button over here and draw a region, a rectangle that contains the part you want to render. Click again the region render button to disable it and render the full viewport. So what we have seen so far is how we can use the interactive rendering in the V-Ray frame buffer window. What we can also do is to skip the VFB window and render directly in the viewport. How do we do that? Let's close the VFB window. Go to the camera viewport, click on the standard label next to the viewport's name and select V-Ray viewport IPR. Give it some time and it will start rendering directly in the viewport. The rendering progress is displayed at the bottom left part of the viewport. To abort the rendering, click on the standard label and select again V-Ray viewport IPR. The other selections we analyzed earlier, like the isolate selected or the lighting, are found if you click on the standard label and select V-Ray viewport IPR debug shading. That's all with the interactive rendering. I hope now it's clear how you can use it and its benefits.